The question of how and why the United Nations is the crux of the great conspiracy to destroy the sovereignty of the United States and the enslavement of the American people within a UN one world dictatorship is a complete and unknown mystery to the vast majority of the American people. The reason for this unawareness of the frightening danger to our country and to the entire free world is simple. The masterminds behind this great conspiracy have absolute control of all of our mass communications media, especially television, the radio, the press, and Hollywood. We all know that our State Department, the Pentagon, and the White House have brazenly proclaimed that they have the right and the power to manage the news, to tell us not the truth, but what they want us to believe. They have seized that power on orders from their masters of the great conspiracy. And the objective is to brainwash the people into accepting the phony peace bait to transform the United States into an enslaved unit of the United Nations One World Government. First of all, bear in mind that the so-called UN police action in Korea, fought by the United States, in which 150,000 of our sons were murdered and maimed, was part of the plot, just as the undeclared by Congress war in Vietnam, in which our sons are dying, is part of the plot, just as the plot against Rhodesia in South Africa, in which our sons will be dying, is part of the UN plot. However, the vitally important thing for all Americans all you mothers of the boys who died in Korea and are now dying in Vietnam to know is that our so-called leaders in Washington whom we elected to safeguard our nation and our Constitution are the betrayers and that behind them are a comparatively small group of men whose sole objective is to enslave the whole world of humanity in their satanic plot of one world government. Now, in order to give you a very clear picture of this satanic plot, I will go back to its beginning, clear back in the middle of the 18th century, and name the men who put that plot into action, and then bring you down to the present, today's status of that plot. Now, as a matter of further intelligence, the term used by the FBI, let me clarify the meaning of the expression he is a liberal. The enemy, meaning the one word conspirators, have seized upon that word liberal as a cover up for their activities. It sounds so innocent and so humanitarian to be liberal. Well, make sure that the person who calls himself a liberal or is described as a liberal is not in truth a red. Now then, this satanic plot was launched back in the 1760s when it first came into existence under the name of the Illuminati. This Illuminati was organized by one Adam Weishaupt, born a Jew, who was converted to Catholicism and became a Catholic priest. And then, at the behest of the then newly organized House of Rothschild, defected and organized the Illuminati. Naturally, the Rothschilds financed that operation. And every war since then, beginning with the French Revolution, has been promoted by the Illuminati operating under various names and guises. I say under various names and guises because after the Illuminati was exposed and became too notorious, Weishaupt and his co-conspirators began to operate under various other names. In the United States, immediately after World War I, they set up what they called the Council on Foreign Relations, commonly referred to as the CFR. And this CFR is actually the Illuminati in the United States. And its hierarchy, the masterminds in control of the CFR, to a very great extent are the descendants of the original Illuminati conspirators. But to conceal that fact, 
Most of them changed their original family names to American-sounding names. For example, the true name of the Dillons, Clarence and Douglas Dillon, once Secretary of the U.S. Treasury Department, is Lepowski. I'll come back to all this later. There is a similar establishment of the Illuminati in England, operating under the name of the British Institute of International Affairs. There are similar secret Illuminati organizations in France, Germany, and other nations operating under different names. And all these organizations, including the CFR, continuously set up numerous subsidiary or front organizations that are infiltrated into every phase of the various nations' affairs. But at all times, the operations of these organizations were and are masterminded and controlled by the internationalist bankers who in turn were and are controlled by the Rothschilds. The details of how they accomplished the setting up of the CFR in the United States as also in the other nations are far too voluminous to be described in this dissertation. But you can find it complete in news bulletin number 122 entitled UN is Spawn of the Illuminati and news bulletin number 123 entitled CFR Completely Unmasked as Illuminati. Both are published by the Cinema Educational Guild, Post Office Box 46205, Hollywood, California. You can get them for 50 cents per copy by writing to that address. Those news bulletins reveal the names of the original founders of the Illuminati and the Americanized names of their descendants in the present CFR. Now I'll go back to the activities of the original Illuminati conspirators. As revealed in news bulletin number 122, one branch of the Rothschild family had financed Napoleon. Another branch of the Rothschilds both branches, the real masterminds of the Illuminati, financed Britain, Germany, and the other nations in the Napoleonic Wars. Immediately after the Napoleonic Wars, the Illuminati assumed that all the nations were so destitute and so weary of wars that they'd be glad for any solution. So the Rothschild Stooges set up what they called the Congress in Vienna, and at that meeting they tried to create the first League of Nations, their first attempted one world government. On the theory that all the crowned heads of European governments were so deeply in debt to them that they would willingly or unwillingly serve as their stooges. But the Tsar of Russia caught the stench of the plot and completely torpedoed it. The enraged Nathan Rothschild, then the head of that dynasty, vowed that someday he or his descendants would destroy the Tsar and his entire family. And his descendants did accomplish that very threat in 1917. At this point, bear in mind that the Illuminati was not set up to operate on a short-range basis. Normally, a conspirator of any type enters into a conspiracy with the expectation of achieving his objective during his own lifetime. But that was not the case with the Illuminati. True, they hoped to accomplish their objective during their lifetime. But, paraphrasing, the show must go on, the Illuminati operates on the very long range basis. Whether it will take scores of years or even centuries, they have dedicated their descendants to keep the pot boiling until they hope the conspiracy is achieved. 